for a personal Speaking of Scooby Doo. With, yeah, really. To work on the movie as he thought Brock should be buff. The producers agreed and one was brought in. I still thought he looked skinny. But I think he, he might be, be one of those guys who's yeah, just muscles, always going to be skinny. Yeah. yeah, He's wiry. Yeah. Um, in an interview, Prin said, uh, it came down to Walker and one other more famous actor for the role of Dean. Upon finding out that Walker had been bested, uh, the other, had bested the other guy, I should say, he decided to, to spare him the usual weight with that typically comes with an audition. He flagged Walker down in the parking lot told him that it, he was the producer's top choice, and in a show of both kindness and business savvy, advised him to request more money when he eventually accepted the role. Good on him. That was a nice thing to do. Gotta look out, right? Yeah. Get a little bit hey, more bud. scratch. Get a little bit more cheddar cheese, because mm-hmm. you never know. <laughs> yeah, like, this may be your only gig. Get some money. Paul Walker did end up turning uh, turning into a pretty good actor, uh, unfortunately, what happened to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a shame. Uh, Jodie Lynn O'Keefe described her character as being completely unlike her, saying, literally everything that character did was something I would never do. I mean, just every single thing. That was, there wasn't a single moment that I was like, I can relate to that personally. That is supposedly true. Like, Jodie Lynn O'Keefe is one of those people who's like the nicest person in Hollywood. Um, but she does often play bitchy roles. She's pretty good at it. Yeah. Um, Pollock constantly, uh, guessing Jeopardy answers incorrectly is a running joke, which he previously did in the 1997 film Truth or Consequences, NM, which is actually part of the title. Uh, the idea was that Fleming's script, but Pollock expanded and improvised his answers. To be fair, one of his fucking answers is correct. (laughs) He says the thing about, like, um, what is it, uh, they were trying to come up with, um, a non-alcoholic version of wine. And he says, what is non-alcoholic wine? Technically, he's correct. Because non-alcoholic wine is strictly grape juice. They might let that one go. Yeah, that's true. You know, because it actually is. Um, Filming took place in various California locations. The high school scenes were shot at Torrance High School. Where Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Beverly Hills 90210 had previously filmed. If you see that school, you know. It has a very distinct look. Uh, the opening scene was one long shot originally, all the way to the end of Taylor's arrival. There was one line that Paul Walker said. He pushes Eldon and says something, and producers thought that it telegraphed too much, that he was going to be an asshole at the end of the movie. You knew that from date from the second one anyway. And then he thought it waited just a little bit too long before Taylor came in. It took ten takes because it involved everybody, and they all had to hit their marks. If one person screwed up or one person wasn't in character or delivered wrong, they had to start again but I don't believe it was actually one shot. I think they actually did do a cut, so it's the whole thing was pointless. Sarah Michelle Gellar, uh, her cameo came when she was visiting Freddie Prinze Jr. on set. When Robert Iskov asked if she would do a small bit, Gellar agreed, but had one particular demand, which was that she didn't have to sit, have any speaking lines. They were not married at the time. Um, she was just friends with them. Also Buffy. Yeah. This is your high school, Buffy. But she wasn't, she <laughs> oh, wasn't that's working fair. that day because they were filming this. Yeah, she I'm just saying. On, yeah, no, I mean, she knew the school well, I guess. Uh-huh. Unless, and well, maybe that wasn't actually filmed in the school. And Buffy sure as hell wasn't, so who knows. But she I was just there visiting. I think it would have been a nice little wink and a nod if, if she was called Buffy. Yeah. I think actually she might have been in the credits. I don't know. Uh, I could be wrong. Um, if they were smart, they would have. Uh... This I tried to see, but I couldn't. Uh, the blinking Lee Cook does after the first kiss with Prince Jr. was intentional by her in an attempt to ruin the take because she wasn't happy with her performance. But Isco found it charming, and so he used the take. I didn't see it because they pulled back. Yeah. So what was the difference? I don't know. Uh, producers made the filming difficult with things like, this is the interesting part, they wanted to cut the dance sequence. Iskov was also a choreographer and wanted to expand and embellish the prom scenes, but also show the show the producers how musical numbers could work in films. The dance scenes were choreographed by Adam Shankman, who was concerned about the scene and that tonally it wouldn't match the rest of the movie. But was Iskov? Um, but it was Iskov committed to the idea. It was up to him to make it fit. Test audiences didn't understand why the dance scene was happening, so producers asked for a reshoot with Usher to link the scene. Shankman also worked with Matthew Lillard on his dance scenes. I can't believe somebody actually 
choreographed that. Also, yes, that dance scene makes no goddamn sense. But it does because Usher says No, no. Usher says no. it's the dance fucking crew. It's not just random like some mm. other fucking dance scenes. So no, I will not let you shit on that. There were there great? were main characters in that dance as well. So no. Well, technically Rachel Lee Cook didn't do much because she asked not to. Yes, because she's smart enough to go, Well, I can't do that. Yeah, and that's why they also had it like it's the dance it's the the dance squad, so of course they would. And you don't think Taylor would be a part of the dance squad? Because she was the only other main character that was in there. Yeah. Nobody else was. It just looked weird. I think you're looking for a little too much realism from a fucking stupid teen movie. Producers also wanted members of the drama club to have some sort of dispute. This is fucked up. That would have ended with a sword fight. The idea wasn't popular with anyone else and therefore wasn't included. Well, I would actually get more on board with a sword fight. You think that makes more sense than a dance no, scene in just, high school? No, it, it'd, be it'd be more interesting to watch. Mm. I, I disagree. <laughs> that would have come out of so far out of nowhere that I don't think anyone would have liked the movie. Um, also, they didn't, and I agree with this, also they didn't understand why Kieran's character had hearing aids and wanted more resolution, which Iscope didn't think was necessary. I mean, I guess he just has hearing problems, but... Yeah, what do you... You want the backstory of like, I would, when I was I'm seven? I'm curious as to why. Yeah, you know, I got in a they pool. They give us backstory we don't fucking need, so why not this one? Fair. Um, Paul's character went dark, and they were iffy on the transition. But Iskov insisted that the movie had to have a villain. Uh, also, the party scenes—they didn't want kids drinking alcohol at the party, which is common at most at most movies. Iskov told them, "Well, if you want them just drinking water, then it's a drug party." He's right. Mm-hmm. It's weird that they didn't say anything about smoking. Because smoking, you know, kids smoking in the 90s was a standard thing, and there's a lot of people smoking in the movie. But they're like, we can't have them drinking because that would be bad. I don't know. Mixed up priorities. Weird choices, man. Uh, the studio also had issues with the pubic haired pizza scene. They didn't know if it was right for kids, and they wanted to keep it a PG-13. There were hours of conversation about it. Well, how many corn stalks, which is what they used, do we put on the pizza? Ha- has he torn out all of his pubes, or only a couple? There's far too much discussion about pubes in yeah. that one scene. That is a throwaway scene that is unnecessary. Yeah, um, that whole scene. That whole just scene cut. was not necessary and didn't further anything other than, hey, look, pubes on a pizza. Isn't that funny? Like, and there was the no reason for it to exist. Yeah, exactly. A reason to get the Shermanator in the movie, which I'm not against. Uh, after all, after all, they came in two weeks into the editing. What the hell? Oh, after all that, they came in two weeks into the editing process and said, okay, I think we really have something here. I'm going to put $18 million into TV ads. I said, if I had half of that to make the movie, it would have been better. But I was kidding. Sure you are. Mm-hmm. Um, the song Kiss Me by Sixpence None the Richer was used as a main oh, scene theme song. up its own ass <laughs> fucking title for a band I've ever heard. <laughs> the film's box office success helped Kiss Me to gain widespread mainstream attention and chart success. Kiss Me climbed to number two on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and stayed there, uh, stayed in the top ten for 16 straight weeks. This is when people were actually buying records, kids. Uh, the film was released in Italy with the title Kiss Me. Weirdly enough, I thought that this was a fucking uh, one-hit wonder for them. They had one more hit. Because I randomly just, I'm like, I'm like, I like this song. I'm like, let's hear what else they have. And sure enough, they had one other song that I didn't remember. Six pants, none the richer. Yeah, because we'd never have band names that are fucking idiotic. I, just, I know. It's not that it's idiotic. It's that it's up, it's up it's so, <laughs> so much that it is inverted unto itself mm. and has turned itself into a donut. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. I mean, yeah, it's it's pretentious, but what do you want from a Christian rock band? That's fair. You know? Um, the other popular song in the movie is Rockefeller Skank by Flat Bo- Fat Boy Slim. Is that much better for you? Much better, thank you. Um, <laughs> which should be a lot of royalties for him since the movie is played constantly. However, he used four different samples in the song. In order to get permission to use those samples, he had to give each of the artists whose work he was using 25% of the royalties. Oops. That means he has no ability to earn anything from the song. Fucking fat boy. You're going to definitely get slim now, son. Yeah. You got no money. Legacy. It does have one. Uh, Upon its release, the film received mixed reviews from critics, mostly saying it's fun, but formulaic and predictable. 
that's why it's great. <laughs> yeah, that's teen movies, guys. I don't know. Yeah, you. it's not all that. Con- you it's know what we're here for. <laughs> yeah, um, it was the last movie to be reviewed by Gene Siskel before his death in February of 1999. Hmm. Siskel gave it a positive review and wrote that Rachel Lee Cook as Lainey, the plain Jane object of the makeover is forced to demonstrate the biggest emotional range as a character, and she is equal to the assignment. I guess that means she can act. Well Good done. for her. Uh, in 2014, it was reported that a remake was in the works, but so far nothing has materialized. Because you cannot remake this movie because it wouldn't work. I don't think you can make any teen... Any teen movie you make now will ha- cannot be... This kind of teen movie. No, no, no. I mean, first of all, this type of teen movie only works in the 90s, much like John Hughes type stuff only worked in the yeah. 80s. But also, there's a lot of stuff you just can't get away with today. Yeah, that's what I mean. You know what I mean? Like, there's there's a lot of stuff that, like, people will look down on nowadays. And so. I'm sure we will cover it yes. as we go through She's All That. Mm-hmm. Starting with our star of the show, mm-hmm. Lainey. And uh, her brother, mm-hmm. uh, where she threatens to spit in his juice if he does not wake up and open the door. Yes. You know, signifying she's clearly the mom of the house. Yeah. That's what we're going with here. We meet her friend JJ, who I refuse to call him that. His name is Fulton Reed. Do you understand me? I don't know. He's Bash the... brother extraordinaire he's, Fulton uh, Reed. He's also, um... He's also Foggy Nelson. There you the go. Daredevil. That was the name I couldn't come up but with. But no, Fulton Reed. Did you notice never. that every scene in this movie, he's either holding food or eating food? In every single fucking scene in well, this movie? Well, there you go, right there. That can't happen now. We can't have the best friend be a big fat guy who has a problem with food. Yeah. It is weird that even though, like, they, they, they talk about it later on, like, it is so weird that he doesn't have a crush on her. Yeah. Not even a little Not bit. Not even a little. It's so strange. Not even remote. That is so strange. It's brought up, like, am I kissable, and he just clams He's up. He's just like, maybe if I hadn't known you my whole life, and I'm like... There is an entire television show that used that as a plot device. It's called Dawson's Creek, and it was airing at this time. Like, that's a thing. So, yeah. we do meet the bros of the movie, bro. Mm-hmm. Zach, Dean, and Preston. Holy shit, are they bro They are the oh bro of bros, bro. Jesus Christ. Uh, they are bro are the girls, the like Gabrielle Union's character, and little are they girlfriends, or are they just... Um, yes. One is, um, was it Gabrielle Union? Yeah. She is with, um... Preston. Preston. Okay. The other one, he's just macking on her. Okay. Because if you remember, he, uh, he mentioned that he was boning some stewardess at, like, 35,000 feet, and they're like, yeah, whatever, bullshit, whatever. So Mm. he's not, Dean is not with anyone. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, Dean, Dean Paul Walker is single. And nobody seems to ever want to date him because he's a scumbag. Fair enough. And you get that from moment one. So Taylor, mm-hmm. the uh, queen bee to yes. Zach's king. Well, yeah, I have school. to laugh when fucking Zach, okay, Zach pops in, right? Zach wa- shows up and... Back from spring break. Back from spring break and he's was skiing with his parents, which apparently they never brought up the fucking college thing, but whatever. <laughs> we'll get to that later for no reason. He looks at his own picture. Mm-hmm. Before turning around to meet his friends. Yep. Already I hate this guy. <laughs> I know he's supposed to be the male love interest, and you kind of do, you know. And he's you like calling get on... people by their, yeah. not by their name, and it's they're like, like, that's not your name. Mm-hmm. It yeah, could be my like, name. Yeah, she's like, he's like, how you doing, Connie? And she's like, he knows my name. That's not your name. So? <laughs> like, he's just that asshole, and you're like, you were supposed to be on his side, and eventually I guess we do, although I don't really, but it's kind of like, it's so weird that I, he's just such a fucking himbo, for lack of a better term, <laughs> that you're just like, fuck this shit. I think we're supposed to uh, relate to him uh, post hack e sack scene. I can't, because I yeah. have many reasons as to why I can't. Uh, so Taylor is done with Zach, sets him down, yeah. explains she met someone at spring break and she's got mm-hmm. a tattoo and... <laughs> Yeah, so she goes to spring ba- break and is dancing because MTV used to do this thing. This is back <laughs> now, when they... Kids, MTV. Kids, MTV stands for music television, which is not what it stands for now, which I think is it's up there with TLC as the Freak Show Network. And uh, they used to show this spring break thing where they would show live performances and they would have people dancing by the pool. So they did this, and Taylor apparently gets to dance by the pool, whatever. On her own float. On her own float, own because... Float, uh, which is a big deal. Because I, I think it was Lil' Kim that was making out with some... With, uh... Who the fuck was it? 
some rappers. Oh, is Warren G's fucking hairstylist? Yeah, yeah. And which is weird because Zach goes, "Isn't he gay? How would you know? Is it just assuming because he's a hairstylist? Because that's not. It's true. also 1999. That's true, but even yeah. that's not never been true.